according to the cloud. So let me start my introduction over again, and then I'm just going to put myself on mute and just let you hop in as you are. So my name is Lotta Love Hawkins. I'm one of the admins for our Facebook group, the Minority Women in Logistics, and this is our freight broker meeting, the one for July. We like to go ahead and make this a consistent thing where we're opening up conversations for freight brokers specifically, but not exclusively, to join in, tell us about what it's like to be a freight broker, help us with some real good content um, that people aren't going to find just on YouTube and Google you know, on how to be a freight broker. We're going to try to get real with this. And so that's where your participation is definitely needed. Uh, we want to make sure all voices are respected. I know I'm saying that 50 million times, but you, you just really don't know how vital that is for uh, people to kind of hear that first and foremost before jumping in. So that's my introduction. If you'll just unmute yourself, join in, cameras are optional, but we'll go ahead and do our roundtable introductions. Any order, just jump on in. My name is Nikidra Muse. Um, I actually, um, it shows on Facebook, Canon Trucking Dash Muse Brokerage. Um, been in the trucking industry for about seven years. Just got my authority for my broker's license in May. So pretty, pretty fresh on the broker side of it. Not an easy thing at all. Um, coming from the trucking side, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. So just looking to kind of network with the people that's going to be here on this meeting, uh, seeing if I can get some some good advice or uh, some leads on how I can change some things if I need to or whatever may be the case. Thank you so much for jumping in. Again, I'm unmuting. Just jump on in as you feel comfortable. Anyone else want to do a formal introduction? Again, very informal. Just kind of tell us who you are, your expectations. Hi, my name is Latoya. Um, this is my very first meeting for um, at all. Um, my goal, actually, my father, he's been in trucking for about 40 years. Um, my brother, he's in trucking as well. And my father's ready to retire, so I'm looking to take over the booking portion, but, um, you know, just want to know, uh, get a heads up of what all I'm looking into, as you stated earlier, um, if this is for me, um, I feel that it is. Um, I kind of got excited when I saw that you posted this, so I think I'm on the right track. So I'm looking to learn a lot from each and every one of you and just to know um, that there's a group out there. Um, I'm just ready to push forward. Thank you, Latoya. Jump on in. Hi, my name is Precious. Uh, I'm currently a registered nurse. I'm a case manager. And I work from home, but I'm looking for a different career. So um, I chose uh, dispatching because I know you can do it from home as well. Um, I'm, I'm looking to start my own business and I'm really just getting started. So um, I... Uh, came on to this group because I thought it would be a great group group to network with other females, other people that's in the industry that's been there a lot longer. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here and I just want to say hi to everyone. And uh, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Precious. Next person. Hi, I'm Monique and I um. <clears throat> I have a 18 year background in transportation, um, not trucking though, but as you know, class B. And um, I did several things within that industry or whatever, but I am currently recreating myself and reinventing myself. So with that being said, I am no longer in that field and I'm looking to get into this, into the trucking side of it and um, see where, how far I can go with that. Um, I want to start off, or I'm looking to start off as dispatching and then um, moving into broker. So, um, 
you know, I joined this group to, um, like others have said, you know, because I figured um, it's a ladies group, a women's group, and I know transportation and trucking industry can be male, you know, a male industry. So I thought it was important to start off with a group of women to, you know, see what it's like and to, you know, get advice and instructions and stuff like that from a lady's perspective. Awesome. Thank you, Monique. Appreciate that. Next person want to jump on in? Well, hi, I'm Lene. Um, I am new to the trucking industry, so I joined you guys' this group just to learn more, to get more insight, to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you, Lene. Thanks for joining. Christy, I keep seeing you kind of. <laughs> Go ahead, Christy. I'll let you jump in. Hi, my name is Christy. I am a freight broker agency. I operate under the authority of X Logistics. I've been in the industry in various capacities for about 16 years, 16 years ish. Um, and I've been a broker agency for the past five and a half years, five years and eight months. Um, I do dry band, uh, LTL, flatbed, drayage, a lot of drayage a whole lot of dredge. Um, yeah, and so just here to contribute and learn in this industry, we are always learning um, and maybe help uh, provide some perspective in the best, best way that I can. Thank you, Christy. I'm pretty sure you'll, so if you're not familiar with dredge, she's gonna go into that more, but it's one of those things that when you meet someone that says they understand it and they can talk about it and no one's forcing them to be quiet <laughs> is something that you definitely wanna latch on to. So thank you so much for having the time to spend with us here as well. Next person wanna jump in. Hey guys, my name is BJ. How you doing? Hi. So I'm just going to jump in for a little bit. As a matter of fact, I just got off a two-hour Zoom just a minute ago, but uh, Coach Snow said, hey, are you going to go to Lada's freight broker thing? I said, wait, wait, give me the number. Where is it? Okay, so here I am. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I've been in this business for a long time. I was with Landstar as an agent for 15 years, um, had agents, agencies, done training, and now I'm out on my own for a year and a half as a freight broker and do consulting and stuff like that. But I uh, just wanted to let you guys know to stay encouraged. This is a great, great field to be in, whether you're in, whether you're driving the truck, whether you're dispatching the truck, whether you're brokering for the truck, for your customers, just, it's just all kind of good things in this industry. And just um, sometimes it can be a little tiring, a little, I have a scan for this, but uh, if you hang in here, you know, you will make a good life for yourself. And I, uh, believe me you are in the right place right now so awesome thank you bj and i know you said you're just popping in um just so you guys don't worry she is a frequent in the group so um you know we'll make sure that her contact information is shared as well if you like to follow up with her for that training for that you know more insight as i know that you're just getting off and i know how that is <laughs> <laughs> it makes for a very long day. And I mean, most of us kind of start kind of early as well. So thank you again for being here. Okay. Next person up. Hi, this is Coach Snow. How are you doing today, Lada? Thanks again for the invite. I appreciate it. Um, my name is Shamil Snow, but I go by Coach Snow. I've been in the industry for over 21 years. I started off as a driver and um Freight Lady BJ taught me everything I needed to know to become a freight agent slash dispatcher for Landstar. So I'm here today just, I had, you know, just to talk a little bit about what I do as a freight agent slash broker for Landstar. I also coach and mentor and train other people that wants to get into the industry. And I would say before you even become a broker, become an agent. So I'm here to help and support anyone that is wanting more information about that and seeing which direction they need to take in order to become a broker. So thanks again for having me and hello, you guys. 
Thank you, Coach Snow. Again, she is a frequent in the group, so you'll be able to connect with her um, here and beyond. So I know people are just kind of now seeing it because the expectation was that we were live streaming. I do apologize, and I thank you for your flexibility in coming into the Zoom room. Um, Want to go through the introductions here and kind of tie that up in here the next five or so minutes. So if the next person will just jump on and do a real quick introduction, we we'll greatly appreciate it. Hi, can y'all hear me? Oh, hi, my name is Katalia. Um, I am new to the trucking industry. I am a medical laboratory scientist in my real life and I own several other businesses, but um, about a month ago, I completed a freight broker training class in Dallas and I loved it. Um, but at this point, I'm just trying to get it up and going. And I joined the group because I saw it said minority women in logistics and uh, you know I just felt like I, that was the place that I needed to be so <laughs> I'm here for guidance and you know constructive criticism and direction and all of the above. Awesome are you in Dallas or did you just come to the training in Dallas? No I actually live in Arkansas I just went to the um, training went to Dallas for the training. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm in Dallas. So that's why I was wondering. <laughs> so I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I know, you know, Coach Snow is in Dallas and then um, Freight Lady BJ just left and she's in Dallas and stuff too. So it was just, and if anyone else that I didn't mention that's in Dallas, you know, we're, we're trying to get things up and going because, you know, Christy knows everything happens out there in Atlanta and it's just like, hey, we, we want some of the fun over here too. So <laughs> okay. well, and we'll get to link up in person. Yes, definitely. And I mean, you know, as, as uh, Governor Abbott would say, COVID's over. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a joke, you guys. That was a joke. <laughs> so the next person wants to come on and uh, introduce themselves, please. Hello, my name is Felicia. I am actually in Dallas. I am new to the um, logistics arena as well. I have 19 years in uh, the medical field. So I am just looking forward to, um, it's very exciting to see so many people that are like just tapping into this because I thought I was like behind the game. But anyway, I'm looking forward to the uh, networking and the insight that I can gain from you ladies. Thank you, Felicia. And it looks like, you know, we're kind of outnumbered and hey, oh, so, so uh, Precious says she's in Houston. We're not gonna forget about Houston. So, but thank you for joining us and I mean, you're going to learn too that your skills, your current skills do bleed over. Um, you know, I've only been in the industry two years and, you know, I share my story at another time, but it's something you can learn. You just really have to saturate yourself in the, the verbiage, the culture and such. So um, we're doing introductions. I know someone just joined us here, so I'm going to shut up and let the next person jump on. Shantae, I'm going to pick on you since you uh, um, shared in chat. <laughs> she uh, said she's in Houston as well. If you wanted to do the introduction or whoever just sure. kind of undid their I mind. just know I just noticed that somebody else said they were in Houston. I'm another newbie. Um, I recently left the education field and it looked like dispatching or brokering or maybe even driving could do something. could be something I could get into. Um, especially since I have a three-year-old baby that'll be at home for another year or so, and I kind of want to be at home with him. Um, and I'm also like, I think that was a toy that said how it was a family business. I'm also kind of looking into making it a family business as well. Uh, brothers, uh, you know, just different people getting into the business. Awesome. I'm a former teacher. So look, I know why you left. <laughs> <laughs> we got the heart but i understand you say no more <laughs> next person want to jump on my name is misha i don't know why i said tmo's iphone but i haven't changed yet but um my background is respiratory i did respiratory for 10 years got out of respiratory because I was tired of working in the hospital and being away from my kids. So the past two years, I've been working from home for insurance. I have a couple of trucker friends and they suggested um, truck dispatching because I like working from home. So I kind of, then I found the logistics group on Facebook 
And so I kind of been trying to YouTube stuff, but I need to find somewhere like where I can find a program to where I can know exactly where to start and build from. Cause it's so much overwhelming information. I need a little guidance. So that's why I joined tonight. Thank you, Misha, for joining in. Absolutely. Um, you're going to see the connections is really what makes your difference. And even though you can find stuff on YouTube, it's going to be kind of geared towards, you know, that person's experience. So the connections you make are really going to be what carves out your pathways. But thank you for joining us. I don't, did we have everyone go? Ebony, I see you in the corner over there. Did you want to jump on and introduce yourself? Hey, Lada. Sorry, I was busy. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ebony. Um, I'm familiar with Lada and the group. Um, so I saw the post and wanted to hop on. I just started a freight brokerage with my business partner a few months ago. So I'm here to learn, network, connect, get some tips, tricks, and whatever else I need to be successful in this industry. Good to see your face, Lada and Lady BJ over there. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Ebony. I think you've been with me the entire time. <laughs> We, we old school here, but no, I mean, it's, it's so much that changes that it's going to be exciting to learn all this. So don't feel, I think someone mentioned about being behind. Don't feel that you're behind, you know, trucking's been here, you know, forever and ever. And um, even with, you know, 15, 20 years experience, you're still relatively new into the game. So, and then there's just so much stuff that's, like I said, constantly changing. Did I forget anybody? Courtney, did you speak already? Look, it's that school teacher thing. I'm like counting everybody. <laughs> I, wanna, I tell you, old habits die hard. So let's just jump into it. Um, and, and again, if I, and Kay, I don't know if you jumped in and introduce yourself, but to your level of comfort, I don't want to put anyone on the spot. I just want to move it along for us to get to the meat of the subject. Did I just hear someone? Okay, me and my imagination. So, <laughs> and you're going to get used to me. Uh, like I said, I come on every Tuesday for the group and I, I just try to be a face to this internet world to, you know, Facebook even more and just let people know that I'm authentic. I'm real. Uh, you know, I'm an admin team. You know, there's two others of us and there's 16,000 of, um, of you guys and you guys are what makes the group. And we just have to be able to communicate, engage, and cooperate. And, you know, just having forums like this allows people to do that. So Mark is joining us. He was actually one of the, the people I was waiting on that said he'd be here. And look, I'm about to put you on. Look, Mark. <laughs> he sees me shaking. His audio is still connected. Hey, friend, your uh, timing is impeccable. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah, you're the you're late, so now you have to dance in front of the class. So <laughs> that's how that goes. Now, if you would kindly, uh, we were just finishing up introductions. If you'll introduce yourself, and then we're moving on into our question section. And you are talking to me. Okay, I'm sorry. And hello, everyone. My name is Mark Jones, uh, freight broker since 2004. Um, prior to that, was on the carrier side and so on. So uh, been doing it for a little minute. A uh, lot of experience and some ups and downs. Here for any questions, and uh, hopefully I can help out with some things. Awesome. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. So we're getting to the nitty gritty. Um, we are going to start off with questions. As you could hear, our group is kind of maybe one or two people more on the newbie side, but we're, we're pretty well balanced in our experience levels. So one of the most common questions, and look, I have my questions written down, that, um, oh, I got three people that are saying, where are you? Okay. <laughs> if you're in the group and if you're kind of got, you know, another connection, if someone would kindly just point someone back to, hey, we're, we, we can only be on Zoom, we weren't able to connect. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I want to kind of keep us moving forward. But one of the questions often, often mentioned, and I'm going to kind of pick on Coach Snow to answer this question because I know this is one she gets commonly, are, um, is what do you actually need to begin? What type of experience should you have if you're looking at becoming a freight broker? 
So getting into it. Okay, so to get into being a freight broker, what kind of experience do you need to have? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I would say trucking definitely would be good to have. Um, I was glad when I started off um, being a freight agent. Um, of course, it was different coming on the freight agent slash broker side um, after driving for 10 years. So uh, for me, I would say definitely trucking, yes, is also good, but I also would not um, limit myself um, because I have a lot of individuals that I've trained and coached that knows nothing at all. And I pretty much take them from the beginning of you know learning the different types of trailers and possibly freight and so on and so forth in order for them to get started. So. You know, trucking background pretty much is, you know, is, you know, would say number one key, good thing to have, but it's also a learning experience to be on the opposite side, which is to be on the broker side as well. Thank you for that explanation. Anyone else wants to chime into that question? Even as you've considered freight brokerage as, you know, something you're exploring, what are some things that you believe would be advantageous qualities that would be advantageous to have going in? Okay, um, even though I'm not into, I haven't been into trucking, my background is in transportation on a class B level. I um, too have, you know, carried um, various positions within there starting off as an operator. So one of the things that I knew or learned um, climbing up the ladder up into management was that when they hired managers who did not have necessarily, um, well, I was in the um, public transportation. So um, people who did not come from bus drivers or as a bus driver did not have the compassion. So I was thinking that, um, Compassion is something that you need to um, either, I, I, a person would need to either um, gain a sense of, you know, the trucking as far as, you know, from the aspect of, of the driver to have that level of compassion. And um, I don't know, am I right? <laughs> I love it though. I mean, and I would agree with you. I would definitely agree with you in the human part of it. I mean, and that's, again, part of the learning experience in absorbing all this. You got to have a compassion. You have to have something stronger than just um, the potential of money to move and you and motivate you. And management is good, too. Right, because I, I found out a lot of people had management skills when they hired managers from the outside. They had management skills, but they couldn't relate because they didn't have that compassion. So I would advise someone, even though, like I said, I'm new to but I would advise someone who was not, who didn't have no trucking, no transportation, none of that experience to develop a sense of compassion for the operators plus the um, shippers and stuff like that. Awesome, I love that viewpoint. Anyone else wanna jump in on that question? What would be advantageous coming in as a freight broker? What are some qualities? I would say, uh, oh. I'm sorry, it's just listed as high. If you'll go ahead and jump in and then Christy, if you'll jump in after, thank you. I would definitely say communication is a, a big key to uh, being successful as a broker. Um, I know, as I said, I just started off in May. However, I've had the transportation experience, but since you have to make so many different calls, talk to so many different people, you really, really need to know how to communicate and communicate what you're trying to, what you're trying to get, what you're trying to offer, you know, how you're trying to achieve your goals. So I would say that's one of the biggest keys too, to be successful as a freight broker, a new freight broker. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Christy? I agree. I was going to say communication as well and organization um, and problem solving skills. Um, 
you really, really have to be able to change gears and, you know, shift gears and slide into something else and, and really get in there and figure it out, solve some problems. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to clear to everyone who had, I messed up, I'm sorry. So I was just kidding on that. Anyone else had um, any other comments on what was fundamental in getting started? Kind of on, um, on that same wavelength, what do you think has been a misconception about getting started? I think even with our newbies, we have, you know, newbies that have completed the, um, the registration process, if I could call it that. And we have some that may have still just been, you know, researching. So what has some of the misconceptions about becoming a, a freight broker? What are some of those? Hey, Lana, it's Ebony. I'm pretty new. So for me, I would say the first thing is that training, like people will tell you, that you don't need to pay thousands of dollars for training or just go to YouTube University or look at Facebook, which you can learn some valuable things. But what I learned is that it's really important to do your research on um, people who offer these trainings, webinars, in-person seminars, because you definitely can be straight in the wrong direction if you go with the wrong um, person uh, for training. And then the second misconception is that it's easy to get shippers. I'm sure for some it is pretty easy, um, but I hear a lot of people that, you know, say they want to be brokers, but they don't want to get on the phones. Like they, um, I guess, just, you know, think that they can use LinkedIn, which is cool. But I think that to get the full experience of being a broker, you do have to pound the phones and, you know, call these shippers and try to build relationships, which some of that can't necessarily be done, um, you know, through uh, email. So those are just my little tidbits on things that are mixed misconceptions um, or so they work for me. I think you kind of hit all of them on the head right there. <laughs> if anyone else wanted to chime in on that. Thank you, Ebony. Um, I would like to also add, um, uh, they think our individuals think that you could make so much money right away. And it's just not like that. It takes time. You know, you got to pack your patience, you know, because it, it, it takes time. I remember when, when I first started years ago, I just was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to um, come off the truck and the same amount of money I was making on the truck, I'm going to be doing this as a dispatcher from home or a freight agent from home. And it took me almost six months to even move my first load. You know, so it, it definitely, it, you don't make a whole lot of money right away. And I just want to just, you know, bring that out there, you know, just pack your patience because it does take time and it takes time for you even to make that, that first dollar. That's a good okay. one. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Can I ask something? Because I think, um, I think what, what is, how is it pronounced? Camille or Shamil? Yes, that's correct, Shamil Snow, Coach okay. Snow. Okay, so I believe it was Coach Snow that said that it was good or she would advise to start off um, as a new freight broker to start off as an agent. Was that you? I know someone has yes, said- that. Yes, yes ma'am, that, that's me because I get a lot of calls of people wanna be brokers and you know think they're gonna make all this money right away and um, my, my training is like four weeks long, but I also give you the ability to stay longer. And that's because I want you to make sure, you know, this is exactly what you want to do, show you the fundamentals of it, you know, over a four week period of time. But I just want, I tell people up front that, you know, you have to have patience. You're not going to be making a lot of money right away. Okay, so let me ask you a question. As a um, freight broker, I know kind of the difference. Well, one of the things is the difference is that you, as a dispatcher, you don't really necessarily need an authority. But as a freight broker, you do have to have your own authority and stuff like that, other things, insurance and all this and all that. So um, as an agent, would you need all that as well? I know. It's the cheapest way to start your business. As I, a broker. I, as a, to, as a freight, to start as a freight agent. If you want to become a broker, you start off as a freight agent. 
and oh, you work okay. under you work along with someone that will allow you to work with them as a new agent with no experience you need help just to get started so on my platform i take in anyone no experience experience little bit of experience whatever you have i'll take those individuals in put them on my platform to start their business day one so that's what i would say if you want to become a broker become a agent first do not spend all that money getting all the authority and everything that's needed to be a broker. Get your customer base built up, get yourself built up, learn the business, learn different angles of the business. Then you put yourself out there and become a broker and take your customers with you. I don't want your customers. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I didn't know that that was, um, well, I kind of, I heard of an agent, but I wasn't real clear on it. You know, because like you said, it's a lot of information out there, but not all of it is either thorough or, you know, whatever. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. That's why, that's why I'm here with Lada. Thank you. <laughs> I have, um, hi, and let me write your name down <laughs> with your hand up. Go ahead. It's Nikidra. Nikidra. I'm not thank sure you. why it's registering that way. I apologize. No problem. Um, I wanted to kind of touch on uh, what the other lady said earlier about, um, you know, when you first get started, it's all about trying to get those shippers, those customers. What I found also um, is the shippers, yes, of course, but I've been able to gain a couple of shippers, thankfully, but I found that when I've gained those customers, I didn't have the carriers. So I think building that carrier base is also very, very important because if you get a load from the customer and you don't have a carrier to move it, then it's kind of like a waste of time. So also trying to build that carrier base, getting acclimated with the carriers in your area or surrounding areas is very, very, very important because that's, that's where my struggle has been you know, being a new freight broker is getting carriers to, to get the loads that I've gotten and were not, you know, was not able to move. Awesome. I think Nikita's peeking at my notes here because that's the next little topic. I want to just kind of throw in um, a couple of issues too. And Kawana says in the chat that that's been her issue right now. She has the shippers, but no carriers. Um, I got in and I've just been always in some type of sales position in one aspect or another. And I just find that's the quickest way to learn a business because you have to now think not only as your company, but you also have to think as your client because you have to make that connection in your head and be able to communicate the benefits, the features, you know, everything that your client um, will want to display and then that your customer, and I may be saying it backwards in you guys' case, but um, that your customer is going to want a desire out of your, your service and product. Mark, can I, can I okay. touch on one thing, Lada? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I have a, another young lady um, that I'm associated with that she is a broker. She's, and I don't know how long you guys have been um, brokers as well, but this is something that you can also think about. She, so she's been a broker for over, I think, two and a half years, and she has the, the freight, she has the, the customer, but she herself doesn't have the trucks. Well, we have the trucks. Landstar have over 20,000 trucks that can pick up, you know, freights that is available, that is in, in you know, good price range and going in the direction they want to go. So what I did was I set her up as a, a customer of mine. Because let's start giving me the ability to work along with brokers. So that may be something you want to think about reaching out, you know, to see if you could get set up as a customer for Landstar. You will, um, you know, you do have the freight, but you'll have the ability to also move your freight with an agent like myself with Landstar. So that's just something to consider. She wasn't able to move anything either. And now that she's utilizing I, I took my idea and run with it. She's doing fairly well because I'm able to help her get most of her freights moved as well. Thank you for that, Coach Snow. Mark, did you want to comment? Uh, 
I'm just sitting here listening to you all. I agree. Um, it's to go back a little bit to your question. When I first started, if I could have realized prior to starting that I was going to be a salesman, I think that was my biggest thing, biggest you know surprise. You're a salesman, and I think that once we realize that, then I think it 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 becomes a little bit smoother and easier, per se. I don't want to misuse the word easy though, you know. Sorry, absolutely. Um, sales is not a four letter word. Um, it is, but it's not, <laughs> not in that sense. So, um, you know, it's something that as you become more comfortable, confident, it will just become more authentic to you, but don't, don't shy away from it because it's what revenue driving. That's where your money comes from. Kawana. Um, hi, everybody. I'm so sorry for joining the meeting late. So I wanted to ask about the Landstar. Um, I called them um, a couple of weeks ago, but they never got back to me because I wanted to know what the percentage was that they take from the brokers um, versus what they keep. I wanted to know how they actually work, um, if it was worth it. I saw some reviews and they weren't exactly good, so I, it kind of like steered me away. But now that I have, and that was before I had shippers, but now that I have shippers, like I'm getting sometimes 40 loads a day and I'm posting them and I'm not finding anybody. And then when I go on the load boards to search for trucks in the area, they're not exactly interested in the rates. Um, so I reached out to them again yesterday, I believe, but I haven't had a call back. So what has been... Um, would you say the percentage that they take, is it still worth it to go with Landstar? Um, you mean to be an, um, I'm not understanding. Okay, so you're a broker, right? I'm a broker, yes. Okay. And I was contacting them so that I could, you know, get have access to the carriers. Okay, so that that's it's kind of a lengthy conversation, and I'm gonna put my um information, and we can talk um afterwards if you would like. I don't want to take up um Lada's platform because it's a little bit more in depth, and I can explain it more. But it, pretty much what you would need to do is work along with an agent, um, you know, that you know for sure. I would say that you know for sure won't take your customer. And that's what I told a friend, this friend girl of mine that, you know, you just got to be careful who you work with, you know, as an agent, because, you know, we all out here trying to, to make it, but, you know, there's just some level of respect and, and, and boundaries you just don't cross. So I know this young lady is, you know, I know who her customer is, but I'm helping her on the trucking side. You know, she needs carriers. So I'm doing what I'm supposed to do as an agent to help her. This is helping her business as well. So, you know, um, I've set her up. She's a customer of mine, even though she is a broker. But I find my, one of my jobs is to also find loads for the Landstar trucks. So it works out for both of us. So, you know, I put my contact information and you can contact me after this. You would like and we'll talk more in depth on what's, um, what's needed. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Awesome, you guys. So we've got the connections going right here. Um, to not get too far from this good conversation, I want to add in and then introduce Christy to kind of uh, address this subject. But specialization is always key. You want to differentiate yourself as much as possible. And so as she was doing her introduction, Dreyage is her, her specialty, and I'm going to kind of let her introduce what Dreyage is, why or why not you may want to be, you know, involved with it, and just some of the things that you'll need to kind of be aware of if you are considering that lane. So, Christy? Thanks, Lada. Um, so, Dreyage is basically transport of freight on containers to and from the ports and the rails. Um, it's always round trip. It is uh, no more, it's local and regional most, no more than 300 to 350 miles one way max. Um, the containers are loaded onto chassis. Um, you know, the chassis are basically the wheels. I don't know how familiar you are with equipment and stuff. Um, 
and it's a lot of volume, a lot of volume. So those are some of the, I guess, you know, benefits or the pros of dredge. Right now, the problem is capacity in a lot of markets, <laughs> but uh, some people don't like to do dredge because they say it's all overweight. I've uh, been working with dredge for about eight years, and I think there was only one account that involved overweight uh, cargos. Um, I know Mark does drainage as well, so he might want to tap in or chime in. Uh, he may have some insight and, and perspective as well. Uh, but basically for import, you would pick up a loaded container from either the port or the rail and deliver it. And then you would return the, that empty container back to the port or the rail. Uh, for export, you pick up an empty container from the port or the rail, take it to the shipper to get loaded and bring back uh, the loaded container and engage it at the port or the rail, depending on where you pull it from. Um, I don't know, are there any, any questions? Yes, yeah, how do you spell that? E-R-A-Y-A-G-E. Is there any way that I can connect with you? Because I'm interested in, um, in drayage, I'm a fairly new broker. My name is Nikita. I'm fairly new, but I wanted to kind of get into drayage. Um, is that something you'd be willing to mentor or um, help me out with? Um, yes, actually. Um, absolutely. I will DM you. Well, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say I'll DM you, but I guess I have to find you in the Facebook group. Yeah. I'm I'm well, actually. Um, Nikita, it's spelled N-I-K-I-T-A. My mm -hmm. last name is Harrison. Well, the benefit, everyone, is 90% of us are in the group. So if you're searching um, on Facebook and just even limits your search to the minority women in logistics group, um, we should pop up. So, um, but also feel free to share your contact information, any and everybody here in the chat. I'm not going to record the chat function. So if you are um, looking for phone numbers and stuff later, uh, kind of record those now, cause that won't be part of the recording itself. Mark, did you want to jump in with Dreyage? I didn't know you did Dreyage. Yes. Yeah, I've been in uh, Dredge for about four years now, three and a half, four years now. Got thrown in it by accident. I was uh, had a customer and I was pulling, they were actually new to America. Um, and I was pulling their ground once they got here. And then they found out that I was able to do it. So they just threw it in it. And they threw me in there in January and I figured it out. It's, uh, it's all the same thing. To me, it's every department has different slang. Um, but you really have to watch it. And, and just like I heard someone else say about becoming an agent first, it's, it's very wise to, to, you know, go work for a company and be a spy, if anything, and just learn how each department moves. Because one simple mistake, especially in this drainage stuff, I have a customer now, Christy, look, I got thrown 15 containers. They're already in demurrage, means they're already in storage and they're charged, um, uh, $280 per container per day. So stuff like that you want to stay away from, but it's not on me. So we just got paid to move it. And of course we, it's a nice markup because they want to get it out of the port because they're paying like $4,200 a day for storage. So yeah, that one, that, that's crazy. I just got thrown 15 and six of them are already at the merge since the third of July. Wow. So, um, Christy and Mark, do you guys cover all ports? Is this, you have a specific port that you work with that you're really, you know, comfortable with, prefer even? I'm pretty open. I uh, do a lot of Savannah, uh, Houston, and uh, Seattle. Uh, same, uh, whatever, as long, you know, as long as I have access to the market, to the drainment, I'm pretty open. My customers have a lot of work. Um, I do heavy Atlanta, Savannah, Charleston, Norfolk. Um, I've got the, I'm working on rates for New York and New Jersey ports and for the rail in Chicago. Um, so, you know, that's kind of one of the benefits of being a broker as opposed to a dry carrier is that you have that flexibility to, to work in multiple markets. Awesome. 
Thank you. Um, I also want to kind of give stage to the other specialties, if I can call it, you know, drive in, hot shots. Um, what are your opinions, everybody and anybody, of your experience of any maybe area you want to learn or get into, ones that you've heard to avoid? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Any other specialties for brokerage? Let me start the question over about, does everyone then just kind of have aims to do drive-in? Is that what you're currently working on? Oh, I, I don't have any preference right now. I, I'm still, I, I told you, I want to start with dispatching, I think, because I just believe in starting from the bottom, working your way up, because then you learn. Thank you, Monique. I don't have a preference um, at this time, but most of the ones I've had have been flatbed and driving, um, and I would want to get into dredge. Thank you, Kwana. Any other specialty areas? Anyone doing hot shot? I mean, working exclusively with the box trucks, final mile. Um, I have drivers who's requested me to be a dis be their dispatcher for hot shots, so I posed the question earlier, well, not in the group, but um, which load boards they were using. Um, and so the what they gave me was one, two, three load boards, DAT and truckers. Is it truckers? Truckers? No, not truckers.com. Um, truckstop.com. Truckstop. 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 Yeah. Truckstop. Okay. Yeah. But awesome. I didn't know if there was one specifically for hot shot. I've heard about Selectus. Again, I am not a broker. So that's the conversation I want to facilitate. And you guys are helping me move this along. That was the next one. Load boards, you know, the good, bad, and ugly of them. What are your comments, concerns, even, you know, challenges working with them? So we could, if you, if you still want to comment on the specialty, you know, feel free to jump on in. But load boards, what are you using? Is this how you're communicating with your carriers? I specialize in a lot of flatbed, especially lumber. Um, the thing about the flat loads is it allow, I mean, the, the load boards, it gives them the opportunity to kind of separate you out from, from the other brokers, especially if you're a new broker, because you won't necessarily have the credit rating. And that kind of, that hurts sometimes because they don't give you a chance. Um, you know, they, they automatically assume that you, are so new that you can't pay or that you won't pay. Um, and I have two, I'm, I'm funded through a factoring company. Um, and then I also have, you know, a savings saved up so that I can advance the payment um, just so that I can get the carrier to work with me. Um, so that's a downside. Um, I was on that, um, but I came off of that because I felt like it was just too expensive and it wasn't giving me the connections with the carriers that I needed. Um, and so I went to truck stop and that seemed to be a little better, not not a whole lot better, but it was good because I could use some of the references um, of some of the carriers that I use. And so I have that days to pay on there, which really helps. So, um, you know, the first couple of months, it was really hard, but once I started working with carriers and, and asking them to be my reference for truckstop.com, um, I was able to get those days to pay on there. And it seems like I'm getting more views and more responses. Congrats on that. Look, all my notes, I just took all my notes. <laughs> yes, about the credit, about the factoring, those connections, that's definitely what is needed. Anyone else want, uh, Nikidra? I actually wanted to ask her with the credit rating, um, you mentioned the carriers were able to help you get that credit rating. What, how, how were they able to do that for you? <clears throat> so what they do is, especially with Truck Stop, they will send you out a reference sheet and it has a list of five carriers that you've worked with. And so you reach out to those carriers, um, and, you know, just some little, <laughs> a little tip, tip. If you know some carriers, you know, reach out to them and ask them if they'd be a reference for you. Um, and then what you do is you just put their information down and then truck stop will have like a group that works specifically on that. And they call and verify your references and then they do the average rate to pay. 
days to pay. Um, the only problem with that is this. You can't have a carrier that you did quick pay for. They won't consider that. Um, and you can't have a carrier that was fact there. You factored the, through their factoring company. They won't consider that. So it has to be somebody that you self-paid or advanced, but not quick pay. Gotcha. And you just call truck stop in and ask them for the reference sheet and they'll send it out to you. Yep. They'll send it Perfect. to you. Perfect. Um, okay. And I even just a, a thing too, if you don't have truck stop already, um, they run periodic, um, promos and so right now i think they're running a promo for 195 dollars for three months and then after that it goes to like it's 30 dollars more and and honestly i think that they offer a lot more than dat up front dat is same price the 219 but they don't give you as much as truck stop will give you i feel i feel okay. i feel do have trucks i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead I do have truck stop, um, but DAT, I have DAT too, but I noticed that I do get more calls. I know this is kind of getting off the subject. I do get more calls from carriers from truck stop than I do DAT, just an FYI. Yeah. And I think it just depends on too, like what your niche is, because there, there could be a lot of drive-ins, um, things like that on DAT. It's one of the more popular, quote unquote, popular websites or platforms but i don't think it has like the connections just that was just my opinion i couldn't form the connections that i needed and um i, I don't know if you all know melissa um she had turned me on to carrier 411 and um i started using the carrier 411 the the version that i use is it's 150 dollars a month but it allows me to like um find carriers for certain lanes, for certain cities, like within a, a radius of certain cities. And so I've really been focusing on that because to be honest, the easiest part for me was to get the customer. The hard part was to connect the dots. I think somebody said that earlier is getting the carrier to, to come on and pick up the load, especially um, with the current market being where they kind of can write a blank check. You know what I'm saying? They write their own checks for what they will and won't accept. And so um, I started just getting on the phone and spending most of my days reaching out to carriers, same way you would do as a dispatch, but you let them know that you have loads and um, get them your carrier packet. And then every morning you just send out a load list, you know, and they will call you like they will, they'll get so used to it. Even when you don't have loads, they'll start calling. That's good to hear. Thank you for those gems right there. If you haven't already had an opportunity to drop your contact information in the chat, please feel free to do so. Again, the chat information is not going to be saved in the recording. Come on, I saw your hand up earlier, so I wanted to just make sure we circle back to you if you had a comment. Um, yes, um, I was gonna ask if anybody had any information on dump truck Um and then I was going to add, well, talk about the quick pay, but she already covered that. Awesome. So dump trucks. Um, and it's Puna Lab. Uh, if I mispronounced that, I am so sorry. Go ahead and uh, jump on in. Unmute yourself. You have your hand up. Did you need help? being unmuted. You could also communicate in the chat, um, but you have the floor right now. Uh, and also um, you mentioned dump trucks. We have um, someone in the group that she, she owns dump trucks and she dispatches as well for her own trucks. And so um, Yolanda, she's also known as Yo Town on there, um, she can be a resource for the dump trucks. Uh, Marcus Jones um, with 314 Logistics, he's part of the Truckers Cheat Code um, on Instagram. He also works with dump trucks in, in the oil field and frac fracking and sands and such. Um, those are 
kind of who I know. Melissa, that was mentioned, um, someone mentioned Melissa's name and she has a very unique name and spelling. I shared that in the chat. She's pretty um, active in our group as well. Uh, the IG info is, is the trucking or truckers cheat code. His name is Marcus Jones. It's, it's four of them. Um, and he's with four, 314 Logistics here in Texas. But I know I did a post on um, today, just sharing they do, you know, some informational um, things on Wednesdays as well on Instagram. All right, you're welcome, you're welcome. So let's move on to expectations kind of as we're closing out. What are some of the expectations that you feel that you may have of other brokers, that you may have of your carriers, of your shippers, that is not being clearly communicated? What are some of the expectation gaps, if I can call that? I felt like um, that people are not being honest about successes and how much work it is. You know, it's really glamorized on social media, um, but it's a lot of work, you know, and I'm not saying you don't have those one-off situations where people like get on and a week later, they got a hundred loads, you know, but that's not everybody. And it really takes thick skin and a lot of work as a broker um, to make those connections. And I, I think that sometimes we as people misinterpret what we see on social media, because I, I will be honest and say, not that I thought it was easy, but I thought it, I didn't realize it was such a challenge connecting the dots, you know, connecting the, the carriers with the loads, you know, everybody stressed, get the shipper, get the shipper, get the shipper. That was the easy part for me, you know, the hard part, especially like during the pandemic and then after the pandemic with the, the capacity being so tight was getting those those drivers. And so, you know, it's a balance, you have to do both. And I, I think that was a part that was a little bit, you know, disappointing to me. Thank you for that transparency, Nikita. Nikidra? Nik um, I, I did want to um, go back to something. I'm not sure if any of the tenure brokers on here know anything about like the, the mass carrier email option, like if they have any um, information on that, like how I could sign up for something or who I can contact to do like a mass email out to carriers. Are you kind of speaking about um, when you say carrier, so the ones that are like in your CRM already or how to be part of a bigger system, if you could elaborate? Yes, how to be part of a bigger system. So basically like now for our, like the trucking side of what I do, um, we get emails every day throughout the day from different brokers saying, oh, you know, we have this lane available. So, and I know they're on a much bigger platform but is there something maybe smaller that I can start with and, and get the carrier emails at least to kind of send out if I do have a load that's available instead of trying to go through a list of carriers in a certain area, calling them, but just shooting them an email instead. That, um, that carrier 411, it basically will pull all of the emails from all of the, the drivers um, or the, the motor carrier authorities registered with FSA, and it gives you all of their contact information, right? And so a way that you can use that is you can also like drill it down. So you can filter out what type of, um, what type of carries you want. So if you're looking for a carrier that just does general freight, if you're looking for somebody that does lumber, if you're looking for someone that does grain, stuff like that, right? You can filter it out and it pins it down. And then what I would do is you can download and convert it into an Excel spreadsheet, right? And then you get that Excel spreadsheet and then you can automate it with like some of the automated um, platforms that hook up with like your G Suite account, you know? And then you can schedule them to go out at a certain time, or you can have it go out every single morning whenever you 
you know, do it manually after you attach the file to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nikita. If you would also share that resource in the chat so someone can, you know, refer to it in writing. I know, and I can't think of the name of it, but on the insurance side, another software is CAB Reports, like C-A-B, B as in boy. Um, And then there's this one that's actually uh, comprised by the people who do Overdrive um, Magazine, Rand McNall. Rands McNally, something like that. Not the map people, but, and I'll get those resources. I'm just going off the top of my head. And it's very much the same. You can download a list of the carriers. You can sort by safety scores, all these other, you know, different, um, you know, filters and be able to change that into an Excel spreadsheet. And it includes email addresses as well as phone numbers. And then, like you said, you plug that in to a CRM, a customer relationship management or some type of email platform, you know, because you have to get an opt-in in order to not be considered spam. Um, and so, yeah, those carriers need to do that. iPhone, and I did not catch your name. Go ahead and comment. Okay, comment. yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I, I'm not really good with that. Uh, but anyway, I, um, I've um, i just recently kind of caught interest in the trucking industry. And, um, you know, because I'm working in the field where I'm trying to pretty much get out of. But I was trying to see, I hear a lot of stuff about trucking and there's so many different angles. And I know I wasn't really going to buy a truck just right now, but I was trying to get into the trucking field. What do you think is a good area to start off with if I was just trying to just replace my job, just replacing a job? What area would, because I was thinking about um, dispatching because I've been seeing a lot about that. But then as I'm talking about dispatching, I'm hearing a lot more about logistics and other, it's other avenues too. Cause I didn't want to do a lot of touching things on my truck. Like, you know, I'm, I'm the unloader. Or, because I was thinking about a box truck or something at first, but I don't want to touch no freight or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I was just thinking, what 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 is a what is another good angle that in the trucking industry that can that that's good for replacing a job? If I can ask, and I know you may have been with us, um, for you to do a quick introduction to give us a little background on yourself, I think that kind of helps um, okay, frame okay. your question better. Okay, my name is Pierre Musgrove. I stay in Houston. I work in um, uh, I work in a plant, a powder plant. Um, you know, I, I've done a couple of entrepreneur things and uh, stuff like have Airbnbs and stuff like that. But you know, I'm trying to get into trucking. Just caught my interest, me and my wife's interest, and it was you know just more stable. We feel like. Uh, if anything ever happens, we know stuff need to be delivered. So trucking was the way to go. But at the same time, you know, I'm just, I, I'm not ready to just buy a truck and just say, hey, let's get it. I kind of want to get my foot in the door a little bit before I just say, hey, you know, I'm going to get a truck. But I kind of want to, you know, see, I kind of want to replace my job and start working in stuff that I'm going to actually be doing like the trucking. So if I could replace my job with something, that's what I was that's kind of what I was, you know, dealing with. That's my angle of it, I guess. <laughs> right. I appreciate that, Pierre. I'll let the, the floor kind of chime in on that. Okay. To, to me, um, a, a lot of folks get in it. Uh, and what I would say to you, brother, is first, uh, get in it and, and replace your, your must-have for the month your needs, you know what I mean? Once you replace your needs, you find yourself getting a raise because you just earn extra time that you never use, which is being away from home, confined to that plant. You feel what I'm saying? So yes, if, you, if you figure out what your monthly is, I mean, a strict mm-hmm. monthly, you know, uh, 20 to $10, give or take, like your, your, your mortgage, your electric, I mean, no everything. You get your hair cut uh, four times a month, $80 mm-hmm. and just 20. Know it to a T. And then replace that at home and try to, you know, at first, you know, you want to figure that out. And and how can I put it? Well, see, Frick, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm month. saying. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, because if you need four grand a month, divide that by yeah. four weeks in a month, which yeah. is a thousand, then divide that by five days in a week. 
You need your yeah. weekends off because you need a life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now you know your daily quota, your weekly quota, your monthly quota. It's easy yeah. to look at your daily quota and be like, oh, I need $200. I can yeah. move a low and make $200. I can move two lows and make $200. I mean, when you yeah. break it down like that, it's a lot easier and it helps the beginning brokers get their goal better because you're not walking around with a 4,000 a month weight on your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. You know what okay. I mean? Okay, okay. <clears throat> so so that's what I'm saying. At what angle, like, is that, is that far doesn't as like really matter. Station? Okay. It doesn't really matter at first because what you're really after is your time. If you get your time back by do, be, doing a dispatcher, Great. Yeah. And then you find you want to be a broker, then just switch. Okay. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But the yes, bottom sir. line is knowing your monthly, knowing what you need a month, a week, a, a daily, and then hit it. And then you, with the time you have, don't waste your time though. Be more constructive. Yeah. But when you find that time, you realize that it was always after the time. It was never the money. Yeah. And, and that's really what it is. That's really what it is. And, and like I say, uh, with 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 dispatch and not being able to to get the truck you see what i'm saying i know you say it doesn't matter but i mean the financial part does matter a little bit because i'm not gonna be able to put that no down no right no now. you're right you, you're right it matters but what matters is how do you want to live your life yeah. you know you want to live your life uh in the in the truck uh Sabbath day you stuck at this truck stop or you drive yeah. down the road or i mean it yeah. depends on whatever you want to do so yeah it's almost like looking at the story backwards how do you want to live what do you, mm -hmm. you gotta do to get this to live like this you know it's, mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong with driving i started off driving started off as the helper on a moving company and then drove drove and when i drove i enjoyed it but then when i got tired of it you know i had to transition and then i realized yeah. okay now i don't want to travel and see these little cities now i want to be at the house but i but i'm still accustomed to this money so as a salesman, which we realized the first day as a freight broker, you can pretty much create your life. If you want to buy yeah. a new car, look at it backwards. It's going to cost me $500 extra. I need to mm -hmm. add $25 extra to my daily quota. Yeah. Okay. I like so that. You, yeah. You, you got to know what you need, though. Yeah. Sound advice. Mm -hmm. Pierre, do you have two profiles on right now? Um, no, that's me. That's okay. <laughs> who's who's the one with the hand up? Because I'm sorry, I'm renaming you, and I'm, I thought I caught the moving target. My name is Asia. Asia. All right, go mm -hmm. ahead, Asia, and spell it for me, if you would, please. It's A Y S I A. Asia, pretty. All right, Asia, go ahead. So basically, okay. So my name is Asia. Um, I'm in Chicago, South Suburbs of Chicago. Um, so I'm a fairly new breaker, like my authority literally just went active, I think last week. Um, so I have a lawyer, he's actually drafting me a shipper and a care, a shipper and broker, con uh, you know, contract and then a shipper carrier contract. But my question is, as far as insurance, like for the contingent cargo insurance, I know I don't need, do I need the same, the exact same insurance that a, uh, a carrier would have? Or how how exactly does that work? Or I know I got I could add them always add them as a certificate holder or have the carrier do that. But how exactly does that work? What what actual insurance is what I need? Yes, is my answer now. <laughs> so I'm the I'm the insurance person. In the chat, I listed a video that goes over the type of insurance you need and why. And just an FYI, with insurance across the board, especially commercial insurance, um, there's what's required and then what is advised. And so just kind of keep that in mind. Always check your shipper requirements or again, whatever party you want to do business with. They should be very explicit in regards to the requirements insurance wise that you'll need. And I suggest to just go off that list. Don't overbuy because you can be insurance rich and cash flow poor. <laughs> so that's my, my two cents on that. There's like I said, the video uh, link from YouTube for the video I did. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Great question um, on there. Uh, and I was just about to mention something when else was going to say something. So we talked about load boards. And like you said, as we are closing up our great discussion, you guys, I want to open it up to any questions that have not really yet been touched on something that you came here today. And you said, hey, as I'm networking, as I'm finding out more deeper about some do's and don'ts and other areas that I can um, 
research, if you had any kind of closing questions for the group as at large. Yeah, I have a lot of questions, but <laughs> it's not about me. So any closing questions, uh, feel free to use the chat. If, um, if you just joined us after I mentioned that the chat is not going to be saved in the recording, um, reach out to me to make sure I do have your email address since I didn't do a pre-register um, in order to get a copy of this recording. Um, what I was gonna say, also share your contact information as you're comfortable in the chat box right now if we didn't have any other questions i want to be re very respectful to everyone's time i know it's getting late you know and uh, you guys are here at the crack of dawn getting things put together and stuff so i don't want to you know um to miss anybody here but opening it back up for final questions comments concerns as we're getting ready to close Okay, everyone is kind of bowing out already doing like the church finger <laughs> as they leave. Out. <laughs> so uh, I see activity in the chat. So thank you for that. Feel free again to list your contact information. We want to do this on a monthly basis. I want to, you know, like I said, put this a little more organized. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Thank you so much for the con um, contributions. And like I said, that is the heart of our group, the Minority Women in Logistics uh, Facebook group. We want to take it off Facebook whenever possible. As you hear, relationships are key. So make sure you are connecting, that you're not feeling that you're left out there to figure this all out on your own, you know, connect with a mentor, connect with a friend, connect with someone that you can uh, talk this out with, because I know that if, you know, you're sharing this with just your significant other, they might be tired of it already. I know mine is. And so, yes, uh, Nikita, if you'll kindly, um, and actually, I'll just kind of go through, if you're putting your email in the chat, I will go through and make sure that you'll get a copy of it. So that way you don't have to reach out twice to me. Thank you again for sharing this information. I heard a lot of good gems. My goal is to make sure you're getting information you wouldn't be able to Google. And I really think from the experience, the um, perspectives and everything that we've achieved that today. So if that's, um, if we're kind of at peace as we come to the end of our meeting, like I said, I wanna just have any last comments. You could jump on the mic, but thank you so much for, um, your participation here today. Just please drop your emails on there so I can make sure you get a copy of this recording. And thank you, thank you again. So I'm gonna stay on until you know the last person leaves. Um, but if you have any other questions and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording if no other questions to be captured right now.